just didn't seem real. There was none other like him. His balance, his footwork. Mm, mm, mm. We felt like we were the greatest team ever. You have to wonder why Michael Jordan, who is surely the most popular player in our time, would be, in effect, driven out of professional basketball. We're entitled to defend what we have until we lose it. The only question, how long can it last? What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Hum Day Show. I'm Jerks. Joined today is Los, the most public enemy 59, and JP, aka Linkser 101. And uh, we're here to talk about The Last Dance, the doc that was just released. It's a 10 part miniseries about, uh, what is it, the, well, the 98, 97, 98, 97, 97, 97 98, yeah. Bulls, Chicago Bulls? 97, and, 98, Chicago Bulls. Uh, basically, that year was the last year they won the championship together. Uh, basically, it's like what the core of like Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, and uh, Phil Jackson. And this doc basically just goes by like, like what happened that last year, and then it also goes back into like the past and like, like the yeah. like, little moments between each each championship uh, with each like main like like player. But uh, yeah, it just wrapped up this past weekend. We we wanted to talk about it. So, what did you guys think about it? So, I mean, I thought it was just basically a documentary on the team, but it turned out to be a documentary just about Michael Jordan. Uh, I literally thought it was just about the 97-98 season uh, going into it and what happened. Apparently, uh, Michael Jordan wanted to win his seventh and eighth ring. Mm -hmm. He thought that they were able to do that, and this documentary shows the reason why that didn't occur. It was a good documentary. I mm -hmm. think it brought a lot of memories for people who watch uh, basketball in the 90s, early 2000s, um, how competitive uh, basketball was back then. There was yeah. no really, hey, bro, let's shake hands and let's dab each other up in the middle of the motherfucking court. Um, no, back then were, it was like... It's, hey, wait, wait. Let me tell you right now. It's funny you say that because uh, I, I saw on Twitter that uh, that people were making fun of that. They're like, they're like, they're saying that they're, that they're soft now because they do that. And they literally showed it in the doc, like Carl Malone dabbing up Mike, like during the the finals, mm -hmm. or uh, like uh, who was it? Uh, Larry Bird saying, you know, mm -hmm. "fuck you, son of a bitch," and whatever after they lost mm -hmm. to them. Like, it, they're but full you of said it. it. Man. You, you, full of no, it. you you said it right there. I'm glad you brought that up because I'm gonna shut that up real quick for all those people. Number one, if you notice, Carl Malone didn't talk to Michael Jordan until the end of the series when he lost. He went up to him and dabbed him up like, all right, bro, you beat me. Oh, no, but uh, some of Larry, them will still go to have dinner. I don't know about that. From what my yeah, understanding they was. They said it in the dark. Even with, <laughs> it, even with the Seattle, <laughs> Seattle Super, uh, Super Science went to the finals, that coach didn't talk to Michael Jordan, and Michael Jordan got all pissed off. So it just, it just brings back memories of how basketball used to be. Yeah, um, and how they used to go to dinner after <laughs> games and all that stuff. But uh, anyways, um, no, man uh, – I agree. You know, obviously, Michael Jordan, he's the <laughs> epitome of that franchise, of those, uh, of that dynasty. So they really focus on him. I mean, you had episodes here and there where they did focus on his, on everyone else, uh, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, Steve Kerr, which I really <laughs> like those episodes because you see oh, their yeah. relationship. Speaking with of him. Steve Kerr, I didn't even know that happened to his dad. That shit was crazy. Yeah, no, yeah. that's crazy. Where he worked as a, he was a, a president for a uh, university. university, he got yeah. murdered. Uh, yeah, yeah he crazy. Got kidnapped and murdered. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, in that area, you know, he could kind of relate to Michael losing his father. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, it is just good to see. I never really cared for basketball, uh, now or then. Um, so it's it's really cool, especially with no sports on. This is something that has been great to see, something competitive, something to see. Mm -hmm. uh, even if it's a look back, it still has been a great documentary. Do I take it, every word that is said on there, as truth? Uh, as, as, as we've heard and seen recently in the recent days, mm -hmm. uh, reports that not everything was really, I don't know, uh, people... Uh, <laughs> Kind of coming out and arguing against what was shown in the documentary. Obviously, it's surrounding MJ. It's gonna make, show him in a better light, even though it do, did show some, you know, some negative things. Uh, but you know, it was still entertaining. That's what I watched it for. It was good to see. 
um, what it took MJ, uh, the path, the career for all these players, all they had to go through. Freaking Jerry Cross, the villain of it all, breaking <laughs> up this team. You know what? I don't, I, don't, I don't think he's that much of a villain like how they're saying he was. Honestly, No, it was he, the owner. I think, no, I think... I think they just knew, like, this shit isn't gonna last. Like, like, bro, like, we can keep you. Let you let him play another like, year. We yeah, can regardless. keep you. We can keep you. But in the long of run, it's, it, gonna, it's gonna it's gonna screw us over. So it's but, like MJ but said, the way the way he handled it is where he screwed up. Yes, yes. The way he handled it is right. where he screwed up. But he was right Correct. about like, look, I, I need to get something from you, like younger. I need I need to trade you. I need to like get some value out of you because you're almost done. Like, and now look at him. <laughs> what, what do you get? So, well, I mean, it's not like if if you remember correctly, back in those days, you know, Scotty Pippen went to Houston. They traded Houston traded for him right after that season, and Scotty Pippen was like a crappy player. But then he ended up going to the Trailblazers and he did go to the finals. So there's that. Horace Grant. Uh, did take Orlando. It did help Orlando go to to that to those finals where they lost against the Rockets. Um, and you can see how he shifted the balance when he went back to Chicago and how they went back to the finals. I think that has a lot to do with it too. You know, from from what I understood from all this documentary, yeah, I, I think the the general manager had some blame in the way he handled it. But as far as the reason why he was handling it, I think it's a lot of the owner. It falls a lot upon the owner's shoulders. Yeah. It always comes from the top. He pretty much <laughs> let him run that ship. Um, for the fact that he sure. mistreated, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Phil Jackson that way, I thought was very disrespectful. Uh, oh, and the owner, and yeah. the owner being the owner, you put a stop to that from the very beginning, but he didn't. Um, yeah, correct. Mm-hmm. Correct. So As you the know, boss, you gotta tell, mm-hmm. and just letting Jerry Cross run all. I mean, yes, he built the team. You got to give him credit for that. No, yeah, Even of course. You got Scotty Pippen calling him the best GM in, in, in the game of all time. Uh, like, I wouldn't say that. I think uh, I'm not saying that. I wouldn't Scottie say that. Pippen said that. But, I mean, look, look. I, I, no, 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 no. But so he team, built the team. I get it. You're giving the guy a lot of power. He deserves all you know your respect as an owner. But when you got this guy bringing all this stuff out in the media, out in the public, look. If you don't like Phil Jackson, that's fine. Keep it in house, mm-hmm. right? Just going out there and saying this Phil Jackson's last year. No way Phil Jackson was going to come yeah. back. Yeah, but that's even owner, the owner, like, No way. O- How are you going to stay somewhere where they should have stepped in? Owner they don't stepped like in and been like, I mean, no, this so, is my coach. And Mike ain't coming back without the owner. I mean, without, um, Phil. without Phil Jackson. And a bunch of those players don't want to play. And like I said, if it was just handled in a different way, you get Phil Jackson there another year. I don't even know why you would let – uh, bro, what what are these owners and these GMs thinking? You have one of the Seriously, best coaches of all time. The worst I mean, part, you, the worst part of two is of like this is a year after they just won. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. like what are you doing? They, they just won two. Straight. Yeah, and, and yeah, they won another three straight. Exactly. Like, that just goes to show you that a player can only do so much. I mean, think about it. For the owner to allow that to happen. And for the general yep. manager to dictate the time, you have a dynasty, and to say and that, ha- I mean, you don't do that. And yeah. like, and we're, we're seeing, you we're still seeing it to this day. We're seeing you have it to another this day. chance of going at a seven, which would have really, like, no one would have ever been able to reach that. Yeah. And you, you give it up because you, and it's time to rebuild, like, and, and you, uh, bro. So it's, it's I, just I, a shame to see. Cause I, think, I don't think that so. Team could've, that I think could have done it again, man. No, I don't think so. They were already torn down. They probably would have gone to the playoffs, but I don't think they would have won. It would have been too expensive for them, yeah. too. I, I, yeah, and I think, you know, like, like I mentioned. Against we're, Seattle? We're, we're against seeing this again. Like, Indiana? Come we on, have, They We have teams. <laughs> we have teams nowadays that do that. I mean, you have the Houston Bill O'Briens. That's a prime example where the owner doesn't care oh and the general God. manager makes whatever decisions he wants. Uh, you have people like uh, uh, Gruden, who is the general manager also for Oakland. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, Mike Mayock and Gruden, like, and they run their ship. So you can see how owners sometimes think that they're doing best for their franchise. For example, like the, the owner of the Browns, um, you know, it's a lot of GMs that do that. I think with this documentary, it goes to light and just shows what my the adversity Michael Jordan went through. And th- this is really just to show the adv- adversity and the will to win that Michael Jordan had. Um, you know, going back through the very beginning, I really love the part uh, where he hates on Detroit, the Detroit Pistons. I think that's one of my favorite all-time oh, yeah. 
favorite basketball teams. They bitch and complain about them. But the Pistons were a fucking great team. Uh, they stopped them twice. No, the Pistons um, were nasty. Like, those guys, I liked they it. were playing I liked more it. than just basketball. I think they were a good team. I think they were a good team. <laughs> Hell no. But it was they were, only MJ. They were, they know, were playing more MJ than basketball. And then, and then the young Scotty <laughs> Pippen in the first, the second yeah. time. So, um, I mean, it just, it just goes to show you from there, he, 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 he faces Detroit. He beats Detroit the last time. Then he goes in and he starts. And then I started noticing like a little trend. Like, you see Utah Jazz twice. Like, really? Really? They shouldn't have even been there. They got lucky with Carl Malone uh, uh, setting that horrible pick against Charles Barkley. The Houston Rockets should have been there. But the year before that, the Seattle Supersonics, they beat everybody. Uh, but they also beat down the Rockets that year, too. So a lot of that. They never mentioned the teams from the West. It's mostly the teams from the East. With, with like New York, this isn't the West. Yeah, why would in. they? Like, yeah. I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but, but I mean, just just think about it. Like the New York Knicks and like old ass fucking Patrick Ewing. Like, yeah. and then, like Reggie oh. Miller didn't have. Yeah, yeah like, that's that's a whole different yeah. dot, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, like, like everyone's like, oh, like the tough New York Knicks. Like, dude, outside of Indiana Pacers, they faced the New York Knicks, and that was it. Like that was their only competition, really. Charlotte, really? You're gonna tell? Yeah, them? So I think they, they give a little too much. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They win the seven in regards to that win because the easy. because I feel like there's <laughs> there's a couple of teams that they. I mean, they were in the East. It's always been a little bit easier in the East. Um, but of course, no one has had it easier like LeBron James. Good lord, when he was in the East, I mean, he faced the what the Raptors like three times in the Eastern Conference. And, like they were like babies. Good lord, but. Uh, yeah, I, I'm glad that they showed a lot of the spirit of Michael Jordan. He was a dick. He was a bully. And they showed that a lot in this documentary, specifically when he fought Steve Kerr. But then we find out the reason why he fought Steve Kerr, because this dude's over here, like, you know, acting like he's something when he had, he wasn't even around for the previous three championships. And then Michael Jordan pushed him, and he did bully him, and, and he saw that. You know, Steve Kerr wasn't going to stand no, for he, that. No, he wasn't doing he it. He spend. wasn't doing it because he was acting like he was something. He was doing it because he he needed him to be ready for the finals. He needed him to be like ready to know that once we get in here to play the the series this the season, like, and not only do you like you have my back, I have your back. So that shit goes back yeah. and forth. So like, I'm going to need you at 100. percent If I'm giving it everything, I need you to give it everything. So everything that he Michael Jordan gives yeah. is what he was trying to like like push off to his other teammates. But the way he did it, it's just an asshole way to do it. <laughs> yeah, and then not only that, we not only is Michael Jordan an asshole, I think Scottie Pippen is an asshole too. The way he <laughs> talks about his team, he was like, "Well, I wasn't gonna let them fuck up my summer. Like, fuck these motherfuckers. Like, okay." And then not only that, he's like, "Oh, if because you know how uh, when they were facing the New York Knicks and they got bounced out of the playoffs." Um, that final shot, uh, Tony Cooker took that final shot. But now we find out it was um, Scotty Pippen didn't go didn't check in because he was mad that Phil Jackson gave the ball to Tony Cooker. And then you yeah. see him like, oh, I'll do that shit all over again. Like, no, you don't. Like, what kind of shit is yeah. that? Now like, my favorite just, part. He apologized. Like a like yeah, a Scott, no. Scott he didn't Pippen's apologize. Like, yeah, he did. He didn't apologize. No, he didn't. He yeah, said he, he did. did. He would if he, he went back in time, he would do it all over again. No, he, he apologized. He, he, but that's apologized. Not a he did apologize. But he yeah. says he apologized. Um, yeah, he apologized. Um, <laughs> no, the my favorite part was when they were coming up against uh, the Pacers, and uh -huh. you know how um, how freaking Reggie, uh, what's his name, Reggie, uh, Reggie Miller, Reggie Miller. Yeah, how he talks, <laughs> how he talks trash. He's uh. You know, he, he's very much a little bit like Jordan in that aspect where he's not afraid. He wants oh, to win. Yeah. He wants the ball in his hands. So, that like, I really like that part of the doc where it's kind of those two teams going off at each other. Reggie's like, oh, are we going to be the ones to retire MJ? I'm like, oh, shit. Like, hey, I like that mindset. I really yeah, respect yeah, yeah. Reggie Miller. Like, people forget how good Reggie Miller was. Like, he was hey. fucking really good. And one of those they should have won that series. Yeah, uh, he, he celebrated too early. He celebrated too early. Tony in Cooper. one of those games, he hit a, a buzzer beater. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's it's entertaining to watch. I like seeing. I'm glad yeah. that they got the opposing teams to get in there too. That teammate of his that then played for Charlotte, I forget his name. Uh, that point guard, but it was kind of yeah. cool to see his perspective on things. He was good friends with MJ as well. Then he 
ended up facing him. Uh, yeah, man, I really, I really liked it, man. It, 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 man to me, overall, what, it's what an entertaining me dog. What tripped me out is like if you look at the at the actual documentary, how they dress back then and how they dress now. Oh my totally God. different. Like, bro, wow, what I the was hell? dying at some of those suits. I'm like, what are you doing, <laughs> bro? Yeah. bro why are you but doing that? Was what, that? Oh, but no, that was Monty Boy uh, style. His security guard is assistant. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> bro, when he did that, bro, I was happy. bro, Wait, what? Okay, you don't so, remember so when he's Jordan, with his security guard? Yeah. He's gambling with a security guard. He's throwing like quarters, and like they're supposed to flip oh, a certain way. Oh yeah. And like he's he's trying to beat that old guy, and that old guy's just like beating him, and he's winning, and then he's all like, <laughs> <laughs> he looks straight at the camera. Cause like oh, Michael Jordan, damn meme. He became yeah, a damn you know how, meme. You know how Michael Jordan was doing that, like when he was yeah, scoring, yeah, yeah, he yeah, was yeah. like, that's what he did. He was like, <laughs> I was laughing my ass off. That's but, another uh, thing. It, it was cool to see the relationships he kind of has outside of yeah, the court. Yeah, you didn't know about his mm-hmm. security. Yeah, his security guards. I mean, who would have thought that this guy was? He was kind of taking care of them because these guys were getting making money off of MJ. MJ was kind of like whatever. Um, and then that other security guard that could be, became like a father figure to to MJ. Oh yeah. Uh, it was cool, man. It was cool. I mean, yeah. I don't. I don't. Right now, I don't. I mean. All the stuff I heard of MJ, I don't think he is a great person, but I guess he has his moments. You know, he has his moments. I think he's a great player, probably the greatest. No, he is the greatest of all time when it comes to the basketball players. Um, you know, hands down. I mean, six championships in the way he won. Man, he had – and, like, you know what? People forget. Like, you got to give that general manager credit. He had Dennis Rodman. You forget how good Dennis Rodman was. Uh, he had Scotty Pippen. He had Tony Kuko. Uh, he had Steve Kerr. Uh, he had Horace Grant. He had a squad, man. Mm-hmm. And for people to think like, oh, you know, he went there by himself. Because you can see by himself, Detroit Pistons were like, what did he call them? The Jordanaires? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was Michael Jordan, the Jordanaires. That shit was hilarious. I love how Detroit, and like, it's weird because that just shows you how good Detroit was. They, The Chicago Bulls had two Detroit Pistons. They had John Sally and they had Dennis Rodman in that locker room. So just goes to show you the importance they place. And they also had that center, too, that backup center. So, you know, uh, it, it showed a lot of his backstory. It showed a lot of how he came up. Mm-hmm. I think he went through adversary when he started winning championships. You can see the cockiness from his teenage years as a rookie to as he got better. For him, and, like, it didn't show this, but for, like, him to talk shit and call himself Black Jesus, bro, that takes a lot of balls. Um, you know what I'm saying? So they have that aspect – and then they show, like, the personalities of, like, how people think of him. And, you know, I feel like – because he had a lot of say in this. He said that literally he had a lot of say in that. And I think they cut off a lot of people because with the aftermath of all this, a lot of people are coming out and speaking about Michael Jordan, how he's an asshole. But this it goes back to his character as far as how he treats people. But nothing can touch his basketball uh, characteristics as the greatest of all time. Yeah, uh, uh, another part I liked is seeing his relationship with the uh, uh, with the Pistons uh, point guard. What's his name? Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which up until now, they still don't like each other. They're nah, still they have, still don't like each other. Real rivalries. Them. Real rivalries. That's what I like. Yeah, we, yeah. I miss that in basketball. Because uh, it was shady how Detroit – didn't you know handle themselves after they lost and as you can see oh, MJ oh yeah holds... when they just walked off the court before yeah, the game yeah. even ended and that's just <laughs> the beginning of how MJ holds grudges man this guy you do something to him you say one bad like one wrong word to MJ that motherfucker's gonna remember he's not gonna forget it could be five yeah. years it could be a whole decade it don't matter he is not gonna forget and that's all he needs is that lo- little bit of just chip on his shoulder to destroy you. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy to see that. I mean, it's just competitive nature. And like I said, this documentary highlights that, that tremendously. Not only that, it highlights, uh, you know, one of the things I think about the NBA, as I mentioned, like, if you notice, he leaves and he comes back, and a lot of the players are different. A lot of the players are not <clears throat> the same. Like, for example, after they win the three championships, he spends two years out and he comes back. And the Bulls only have Scottie Pippen. That's really their all-star. And it just shows, like, 
he didn't go to the general manager and say, I need more help, or like LeBron James, like bitching and moaning. Like, no, this dude was just like, whatever I have, I'm going to make it work, and we're going to win a championship. And I feel – I respect that a lot. I, and I think that's what the game is missing nowadays. We have too many crybabies. Uh, a lot of people don't care about defense. They don't care about shutting down the player. Like, Michael Jordan was like, oh, this dude is talking shit, or this dude thinks he can guard me. I'm going to guard him and – uh, score on him like that mentality to work both sides of the of the court a lot of a lot of basketball players have lost that the defense in the nba now is trash no uh, my, like, i blame part... the nba i blame the nba and the rules they put i blame the refs and how they they officiate their refs to call games refs have too much power in the nba right now they decide games a lot of the times and that's yeah. why i stop watching i'm not i don't i want to watch players play i don't want to watch refs play so that to me is the well, problem. Well, my favorite part, my favorite part is when Gary Payton is like, "Oh yeah, we took the series over, and you know, I was defending him, and I was like, gotta tire him out." And Michael Jordan's just like, <laughs> like the glove, yeah. Gary Payton, the glove, pretty much. Yeah. Like, no also problem. became a meme. Like, also became a meme. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I mean, there was a there was a lot of meme worthy uh, uh, things that happened here, but yeah. it just shows like to this day he's still like, dude, you couldn't cover me, and I feel like. That's a lot of confidence, a lot of competitiveness from Michael Jordan. And everything that he does, really, if you hear his speeches, and like, for example, when he won the Hall of Fame, when he went to the Hall of Fame, um, I mean, he's just a competitor and probably one of the greatest competitors of all time, if not the greatest basketball player of all time as well. I mean, to, to, to be at that level of professional sports, continually, continuously win championships after championships, like – you have to have that type of mentality, I believe. Like, like people, yeah. people who want to be yeah. at the top, you're not gonna make a lot of friends getting there. Like people who want to get to the mm -hmm. top and stay at the top, you're you're losing friends. You're gonna lose family because your focus is on the win. Like I understand where Jordan is. I understand why he's the way he is. Like that's the way he he knew. Like I think with Jordan, he kind of understood it early in his life. Like. In order for me to win, I have to be like, like one thousand percent into this game, no matter what. Like friends, family, all that shit comes to the side. This comes first. So that's why that's why he knew like, like when it comes to his teammates, he's like they're they're like me. They have to be like me, a part of me. So they're gonna have to understand this is who I am, and I'm gonna give them everything. So that's why he was such an asshole with them because he wanted to push them to to get like not get to his level because of course they're not. But like at least try to like like reach something more than they what what they already were, and yeah. I, I think I think that's what JP is saying. Like he didn't. That's why he wasn't running to the front office to get like better players and whatnot. But I mean, he was mm -hmm. asking for Scotty. <laughs> Scotty's like the only one he actually like. No, Scotty has to stay. <laughs> yeah. To play yeah. with him. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, he saw what he could do. You know, he even yeah. said it. He was like, there is no Michael yeah. Jordan without Scotty. Yeah. What I, Scotty, like, was the perfect like, companion for, for Michael. Like, like they worked so well together because I guess they understood each other in different in a different level than anybody else. I guess because Michael was so, like, in your face. Man, even, and, and Scotty wasn't in, all that in your face, but he still yeah. got his, his job done. Yeah. And, like, one of my favorite things is, like, Kobe Bryant finally admitting it. Like, Kobe Bryant saying, hey, you know what? I'm not the greatest of all time. Like, everything I learned, I learned from him. He never hit like, that. Like, and so that closes that. Yeah, he did say that. He said he never hit that. that. That was never a secret. He did say Oh, well, um, he pretty he much He even wore his, George, so his jersey. Like, like, it was pretty obvious. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we know that. Uh, so, Dennis Rodman. I mean, <laughs> Let's talk about Dennis Rodman. Bill Jackson handled him so Carmen well. Carmen Electro, fuck, oh, dude. Yes. Nah. Carmen Electro, <clears throat> fuck, Phil, fuck Phil Jackson. Carmen <laughs> Electro was looking so man. Like you forget, I forgot about her. Like I literally forgot about Carmen Electro. She was like an afterthought. Then going back in time to the nineties, you're like, damn. Like, woo, she was Dennis solid, Rodman bro. with and, girl. And no Dennis girl. Rodman straight up just Bruh. leaving, not showing up for practices. You know, in this day and age. No one's having that. Phil Jackson knows that a player like Dennis Rodman needs his space. We need this guy. No one can rebound like this guy. Um, yeah, it, it's really, you know, those role players were very you know, essential 
for this squad and Phil Jackson maneuvering them all. You know, it kind of yeah, he's doing what he's doing. Yeah, I don't know how Phil yeah. Jackson. Put well, up that's with why some he's that probably shit. like fuck. He must have getting been getting high a lot. Like I don't know how he did that <laughs> shit. He that must shit, have. That shit would have pissed me off. This motherfucker left in the middle of a, a fucking playoff game or like series. Like what? Hell no. Cut his ass. I would, yeah. Cut his ass. Bye. You sit on the ass. bench for the rest of the season. How are you gonna do that for your to your teammates? Like fuck no. I don't All know. Right, how, I don't got, know how he did it. <laughs> I mean, look, dude. We found out so much in his documentary about back then. I mean, I can't wait for other last <clears> dance, <throat> like the last dance. Well, LeBron's so LeBron's doing Chicago the twenty seven. LeBron's doing the twenty seven. So we'll see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all want to give this a score? Y'all want to give this a score? Sure. Oh, he is. <laughs> I mean, I give it a I give it a ten. It was a great watch. I mean, I was into it. I was like nineties basketball. I remember this. I remember that. Like the way he's like, I'm not back. Uh, Cause Shaq was Shaq like by that time. Uh, like, bro, you know, you can hold like a lot of shit and break memories. So oh my God. Bad. I'm slow down, slow down, slow down. <laughs> yeah, slow down. You're, you're breaking up. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's too, too, well, too much I'm energy sure over it, there. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, I'm going to well, give it a 10. Uh, it's a 10. It a it's a 10. A 10. A teen. It's a teen. Yeah, it's a 10. It's a teen. It's well done. <laughs> it's well put together. Uh, uh, obviously, a lot of thought and effort put behind this. Uh, there's going to be more like stuff coming out. Like you said, Lowe's like Horace Grant is already trying to come out again and say, no, Michael's full of shit. I didn't, I didn't, Scotty I didn't, Pippen I didn't say no is that. pissed. I don't know. Oh yeah. I suppose how it was portrayed or someone. I don't know. Uh, Horace Grant, MJ. I mean, I'm <laughs> sorry, uh, Scotty Pippen. So I don't know. I'm pretty sure MJ's <laughs> freaking happy because he's now trending. Yeah. Everybody's it's making talking it real about good. him. The arguments are being made again. He's sitting back and smoking his cigar. Motherfucker always has his cigar. Oh, so. yeah. He was smoking and drinking during the game. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I like, damn, I guess that was the secret to his championships. <laughs> Miller Light. Miller Light. All right. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for everybody watching. Go watch this doc if you haven't. I think it's coming to Netflix because it is like co-produced by Netflix. But currently, it's on ESPN. Uh, but yes, thank you guys again for watching. Make sure to um, catch our main podcast on Mondays at 6 a.m. on youtube.com forward slash the three way podcast. Also on Spotify, Anchor, uh, Apple Podcasts, and any other uh, podcasting platforms. And if you have any comments on this doc or any other things that we've shown, please leave them in the comments below. You can also, also find us on Instagram, you, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and your mom. All right, guys. Thank you. Bye, guys. Peace out. Bye-bye. <laughs>